So, you know, AEW, obviously, they did the third biggest number in their history on Wednesday night. Um, it is the weirdest thing. I, I don't know what it is. Well, I mean, there's all kinds of different things. Um, but, I mean, this really started when I was in Dallas on Friday, you know, and that was the day of the um, the uh, official public on sale for the, for the Arthur Ashe Stadium show. So where they sold the 15,000 tickets in one day. Ever since then, it has just been the weirdest thing because, um, you know, I, I think that so many people have been um, told by people who they believe in or that they think are smart that AEW is a complete and abject failure and, and um, people like you and I who cite stats are uh, cherry-picking stats or um, or the stats don't count or they never, they never grow even though... Psh, they never grow, which is the biggest joke of all. I mean, just look at the ratings year to year. And I know, granted, they don't have competition, but still, look at the ratings year to year. Um, this return, you know, I mean, but this return, you know, I mean, the last couple of weeks has always been, oh, you know, it's first time back in a year and blah, blah, blah. And so this doesn't count either. So there's always been a way to not count, not count, not count. And even Chicago doesn't count because it's pay-per-view. But this one, the New York one, you know, you say... It doesn't count, but then it's like, you know, paid attendance as of uh, this past Friday was just under triple of what WWE had for Madison Square Garden. So that's a hard one for a lot of people to justify. And it's not like WWE had just run Madison Square Garden, you know, like three months ago. They hadn't run Madison Square Garden for whatever it is, you know, 16 months, way over a year. They hadn't run a show in New York for way over a year. So it's the same well, you're just back from COVID. And, I mean, there's always excuses and everything. But it has been the weirdest thing since Friday um, from from people who are just... I, I don't know why people get so upset. I mean, I do. I do. I, I, I get it. I really do. But it's just been it's just been very weird. Um, and, any, you know, and people who... I mean, it's just the, the denial. And, and this rating was like a big example. It was just... You know, they're so they're so adamant that AW because of their style cannot gain new viewers. And, and now here we are. And then also, I think that some of that is maybe I mean, the, the Danielson and Punk stuff, because it's like, look, um, I think that everyone kind of knows that unless something falls apart, they're both coming in uh, because if if these deals were not close if not already done and there are signs that both are done but i cannot confirm because no one in that company will confirm it but there are moves that i know of that are being made that would only be made um if cm punk was coming in and with danielson i can't say that i know any moves that would be made that would confirm danielson is coming in that i know of but i also know that danielson was most likely 90 percent or better going to the company with the relationship with new japan and obviously you know the story i mean um nikon did not get the deal done and it was not just a brian danielson deal in fact it was not even brian danielson was was, was a it was certainly part of the original talks but it was not the crux of the original talks but it was among the reasons the talk started without a doubt um, and one of the reasons why they wanted to expedite those those talks and in the end of the day new japan did not make that deal so because of that you know i mean i kind of you know i'm watching the tokyo dome tonight and um uh, it's it's kind of weird because it's like brian danielson for years you know has wanted to work with these guys you know up and down the card suzuki and some of them he'd worked with when he was younger suzuki and nagata were some of his favorite opponents ever but also the new you know the new crop whether it's an ishii and obviously zach saber because it's a perfect opponent for him and hiroshi tanahashi was worked with before but you know now you know they were both younger guys and now they're like two of the greatest of all time and it's a different it's just a different thing okada i don't know that he's ever worked with um shingo takagi i don't know if he's worked with him or not but what an incredible wrestler will osprey eventually will be back who i know he's never worked with and and that's a dream match so it's like you you have all that but then 
It's like the New Japan that that um, you know that he wanted to be a part of is like you know I watch the show tonight. It's like you know COVID's just ravaged the company. I mean the workers are still there. I mean up and down the card, there's those great workers. They're still there, but it's so different from the hot atmosphere that you had pre-COVID. You know with the sellout crowds and the hot buildings and and in many ways. Um, you know, I mean, like they were, they were, they were, they were absolutely a hot promotion, and and um, I don't know if they were still growing, but there were ways to grow um, internationally. I mean, they they took a hit internationally when AEW started, without a doubt, but within Japan itself, um, they, you know, I mean, they're probably about where they were. Um, you know, I mean, so, but you know, it's like okay, now now that he can go, I mean, now that he can contractually go, he hasn't been there because of COVID. And then, you know, who knows? Like, there was always the thought, well, Japan's going to keep this thing under control and they'll be, they'll be back before us. But there's nothing that can keep this thing under control. I mean, that's the one thing we've learned. The only thing that works is vaccinations. And Japan, you know, the mentality is very different. They are, you know, there is absolutely a lot of push for vaccinations in Japan now um, that wasn't there, you know, even two months ago. But it's, they're still well behind, and I don't know what's... And also, they're going to be more cautious than we are. That's just how it is. So, like, again, like, when do we go back to, you know, the crowds that they used to have and the business being as strong as it used to be? And I don't know. But, but I mean, the one thing is, is because of the way they train the talent and the quality of the talent, that when they do go back and they can do cheering and booing and everything, and it does go back to normal, when and if that ever happens... Um, you know, it will be a hot promotion again, although they may have to regain some ground, or maybe they won't, because look at United States with AEW and WWE. I mean, the minute the fans were allowed to come back with with full houses, I mean, it's both sides are hot as hell immediately. I mean, immediately. I mean, it's not like they had to rebuild this audience. I mean, they are, WWE is doing, I mean, WWE is, was doing so so and john cena was an absolute unbelievable um whatever you know i mean the amount of tickets that they sold i mean the uh pittsburgh was pittsburgh last night was going to do well either way but cena added a lot of tickets uh louisville was not doing well and ended up doing well tomorrow night in kansas city was going to do poorly and it's now actually going to do relatively good like seven eight thousand people so um and this is all last week ticket sales after cena was announced for these cities so i mean that that he, he you know we want to talk about a difference maker in modern wrestling you they say nobody is and um he is i mean for at least for this month he will be i mean and then he won't be around but he will be and AEW doesn't have that but AEW came in and i mean uh, they could sell out Charlotte this week, you know, Charlotte Coliseum, which is not an easy building, you know, the old, the Bojangles Colise Arena, whatever. That is not an easy building to fill, and they could. It's They may come a little short, um, but I, I kind of think that uh, they're going to have a strong walk-up because, you know, they just announced the card, and they've got that, they've got a great card for Wednesday. So I think they're going to come pretty darn close, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, the New York market, that show... Uh, believe it's it's an interesting thing the the rumors from the rumor standpoint because um, obviously the rumors are out and both punk and Danielson on Wednesday were among the most searched topics in the country so it's not like this is something that it's only wrestling fans who know I mean I I have friends who who I saw today and they knew you know, and they were asking me about those two names. So it's, 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 I'm not saying it's mainstream because obviously mainstream people don't know, but quasi sports fans who sort of hear big wrestling news, they know of this. And, um, as far as it has not led to, that has not led to giant increases in, in ticket sales anywhere because I guess, you know, people don't know which show, like the New York show, you know, the rumor that, that, Danielson's debuting in New York has not led to New York selling um, all kinds of tickets. The ticket sales have been, you know, slow since the big thing. They're well, they're they're the mid sixteens, but they had fifteen a week ago. You know, I mean, it's not like they're selling the whole place out. I think that, 
you know, by the time the show comes, a lot of people are pretty sure they're going to sell the whole thing out, and, you know, time will tell. But um, Chicago, for the pay-per-view, the, you know, which which sold out instantly, the secondary market prices are, you know, they, they all went well up in the last, since Wednesday. Um, secondary market was very, very strong. So there is that as far as the people who don't have tickets wanting to get in to see with the idea that CM Punk's going to be at that show and logic would tell you that if he's in that he debuts that week in Chicago that's just logic um so so but anyway this is all part of the the, the other big story which is that what does this all mean you know i mean obviously you know i think with with Danielson i think we there's certain things that we know with Danielson, and one of them is that he's going to come in and he's going to have great, great matches with all kinds of people. And with Punk, he may. We don't know. He's a little older, hasn't been around wrestling as much. Um, his, he's, they're, they're, you know, his body was kind of beaten up by the end. Um, but we, the, we'll, I'll tell you what we we do know that Punk's going to probably come in and do fantastic promos. We know that Danielson's going to come in and do fast, fantastic promos. That's a given. What will it mean as far as ratings go? I mean, the big thing now is is if they can boost numbers and uh, WWE gets hurt on Monday by football, which they will. How close is it? And um, you know, it, it could be could be close i mean if wwe did not i will say this if wwe did not have fans and this happened the way it was i would say with almost certainty that AEW would be fighting tooth and nail and beating wwe some weeks um with fans the wwe numbers are going to be higher we don't know where they level off at do they stay in the uh you know i, I don't think they're going to stay like the raw number it's not going to stay at a point five seven because that's seen as for show first live raw you know first live raw with fans it will fall um if it falls to a point you know five one let's just say and then forget about these next two weeks this is the olympic weeks i mean if it goes down you know smackdown was down uh, you know smackdown was down and that's even with cena so um you know what but and and the raw number is going to be down from what the real number would be because the Olympics are going to hurt at 10% or some percentage in that realm. Um, the first serious number where we would know where Raw really stands will be the first Monday after the Olympics. You know, that will tell us where the, the first scene appearance and the first time with fans and where we're really at as a normal Raw rating. Um, we're two weeks basically two weeks from tomorrow on that and um from there you know if that number is like a 0.49 and AEW is right now at a 0.44 and punk and danielson i mean it could be i don't think that they will make up the difference between a 44 and a 49 but they may make up the difference between a 0.44 and a 46 and a four or a 47 maybe and now we're talking about then football season comes maybe then again, you know, maybe WWE stays high, high, high enough to where they don't beat them. I don't know. But it is an interesting thing to ponder, um, you know, as far as what's going to happen. But it will be, it will be close. I mean, I keep thinking with um, the closest thing to this was when uh, TNA got Hogan, Flair, Jeff Hardy, and Rob Van Dam all at the same time. And Rob you know, was a big name at that time, but he wasn't the name the other three were. I mean, Jeff was walking right at WWE where he was the hottest wrestler in that company. Um, and Hogan and Flair are Hogan and Flair. And, you know, as, as big as Danielson and Punk are, uh, they are not Hogan and Flair. They are not close to Hogan and Flair. And while all those guys absolutely helped TNA numbers, um, it wasn't as if they were ever competitive with WWE but also they were never they were never close like like AEW is um but they still and also I think the other difference is, is that you know Hogan and Flair due to age and and also you know and also it's TNA you know I mean TNA was never at this level I mean never even close um and um though you know like and they weren't running around wrestling on shows which is the key to building up the live gates 
um, you know, Jeff Hardy was, and Jeff Hardy absolutely helped the live gates there. But I mean, when we say help the live gates, he got them from, you know, 800 to 1800, 1700. You know, it's the, here we're at, you know, we're at, I don't know where the, what the normal number is going to be, but it's 5,000, you know, and, and obviously a lot more than that on big shows. And, um, do what does Punk and Brian mean when adding to the mix? And you got your dream matches because most of these guys that are on top in AEW, exception being Jericho and Moxley, um, will be all new matches for Punk, all new matches for Danielson. And the new match thing is, you know, especially, you know, Omega, uh, Darby Allen, the, the guys that are, that are, you know, that are, that are the top draws there. Um, up and down young bucks um and uh you know whatever you know i mean obviously jericho and moxley are but i mean it's like um you know you go up and down and then even even again with let's say daniel bryan um i don't know if he's going to work because daniel bryan has to be a baby face at first um and so does punk and jericho's a baby face and i mean you can do it and there's ways to do it and i wouldn't you know at some point will they do it they probably should but i think right off the bat um it's really uh the guys like mjf and omega that are going to be the the big matches and maybe some of the others um but um yeah those but those first time matches um you know, there's going to be, you know, I mean, I think some of them will do well on pay-per-view, and I think some of them will, if you put some of them on TV, uh, they'll do really, really well. So, you know, and then um, and there's the other thing, too, is is does does Friday Rampage hurt Wednesday or help Wednesday? And it probably historically, historically tells us it hurts. So maybe that will not allow them to hit 4-6, 4-7, 4-8. Um, and they'll go to three nine or something because some people will skip it because they're going to watch on Friday and you know and all that. It's not as with more hours the hours that are around become less important. So you know we all have to wait how this thing plays out. But but the fall is going to be super interesting. It's going to be the I think September of this year will be the most interesting month of wrestling since the debut of AEW um, and. You know the most competitive month of wrestling maybe maybe since 1998 hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.